Hi, my name is Liel. I'm a software architect at Mellanox NVIDIA. And uh, today I'll discuss how to offload for Kubernetes container networking. I'll talk shortly about the need for a container hardware offload, uh, then uh, do a short overview of Kubernetes networking model. I'll talk about the use case we chose, which is OVN CNI, and the needed work that needed to be done on OVS and OVN hardware offload. So Linux containers, as you all know, have changed the world of cloud computing and the way enterprises do software. As a lightweight standalone executable package of software that includes everything needed to run an application, container can run as VMs never could because it's much lighter. This enhances the already existing need for network hardware offload in the cloud in order for the network not to be the bottleneck. Kubernetes is the de facto um, orchestrator on big cloud in production. It's an open source container orchestration system for deployment automation, scaling and management of containerized applications. And in this session, we will discuss the enablement of networking hardware offload in a Kubernetes environment. So a few words about Kubernetes. Kubernetes was designed as a loosely coupled collection of components, which are centered around deploying, maintaining, and scaling applications. It abstracts the underlying hardware of the nodes and provides a uniform interface for application to be deployed. So when using Kubernetes uh, to deploy your application, you can deploy them quickly. You can scale them up and down, roll out new feature, monitor and health check the containers, and limit the hardware usages, the hardware usage to the required resources. Kubernetes networking model is based on CNI, Container Network Interface, an interface uh, which defines uh, the, the network, the, uh, this interface, Kubernetes networking model is built on top of Container Network Interface, CNI, an interface between the container runtime and the network implementation plugin. Different CNI plugins utilizes different Linux networking mechanism. So for example, I listed a few here. Lanel, which is a Linux bridge base with VXLAN. Calico, uh, which is a routing to the host based SDN. There are several OVS, open vSwitch based ones. Uh, among them are OVN, Antria and Open vSwitch, and Cilium as an example for BPF based one. So, talking about hardware offload, there are many options and acceleration in general, there are many options here. Uh, for example, with uh, Flannel and Linux Bridge, there is, uh, there is thinking of how to offload that. Uh, we can use driver to listen to both Netlink events coming from the kernel for configuration purposes, such as static Mac, VLAN configuration, VGT, VST, etc., and listening to hardware uh, internal events of the device, uh, such as learning, port events, and uh, port changes, etc. Calico, on the other hand, which is based on Linux routing, FIB, uh, is also a part dependent on um, uh, IP tables. And uh, this is already, this already has several implementations, 
also with IPVS and with um, eBPF. Both are um, accelerating and boosting the performance. Uh, and there can be several other direction as net filter flow table infrastructure, um, which provides a fast data pass for the classic Linux forward forwarding pass. Um, it allows you to accelerate packet forwarding in software and in hardware if your NIC supports it uh, by using contract-based network stack uh, bypass. Uh, in these uh, uh, flow tables, entries are represented through a tuple that is composed of the input interface, source and a destination address, source and destination port, and layer three or four protocol. And each entry also caches the destination interface and the gateway address to forward the packet. Um, we have chosen to go with OVN one, uh, OVS one, and I'll talk later about it. One key component in Kubernetes is a uh, Kubernetes service. The service is an abstraction which defines a logical set of pods and the policy by which to access them. So as you can see here, there are several pods uh, deployed as a service. Therefore, they are assigned of one virtual AP. And when clients want to access this, this one, of, one of the backend ports, it access the virtual AP, the service. Um, Kubernetes provides the routing among the dependent pods and load balancing. This is all being handled by Kubernetes services. And therefore pods can die, replicate, move to other nodes without the front end um, needed to know about it. The, the service mechanism is implemented using NAT, can be implemented in IP tables, TC, OVS, or IPVS, and which makes NAT performance uh, a key element in container deployment performance. So in addition to the CNIs I mentioned before, there are also simple C simpler CNIs which doesn't implement a full SDN. Uh, uh, two examples here are Mac VLAN and SROV. Uh, the problem with these CNIs is that they cannot serve for, uh, for the purpose of being a primary uh, Kubernetes network because it cannot, they cannot implement NAT. They cannot, you cannot deploy services on them. And the way it is being uh, solved is by deploying them as a secondary network. Meaning that in this case, each container will have two network interfaces. One, which is managed by Kubernetes, the primary network, and another one only for uh, contain the container workload uh, data path. When thinking about offloading and acceleration, we wanted to choose uh, a CNI which uh, implements a full SDN that we can offload without the need to edit as a secondary network and um, just use one network interface inside the container, which is managed by Kubernetes. So we, choose, we chose OVN CNI, which an, is an OVS based CNI. OVN is an open source network virtualization solution developed by the open research community. It has a specific uh, Kubernetes CNI plugin called OVN Kubernetes. So it's an OVS based solution. It has L2, L3 virtual networking uh, composed of logical switches and routers. A user can configure network policies 
and between the worker nodes there is a uh, Geneva uh, overlay tunneling. So the goal was to achieve full OVN data pass hardware offload. And for that, we needed to have full OVS hardware offload with the relevant capabilities that OVN utilizes. And OVS, OVS is offloaded using Linux TC mechanism. So when by achieving full OVN data pass hardware offload, we reduced CPU utilization uh, dramatically. For that, we leveraged Linux TC flower support for Geneva encapsulation and L2 and L3 ACLs. And we needed to have also contract, connection tracking, not hardware offload through Linux TC. So there was a work being done about that and it's um, upstream now to enable this uh, connection tracking that hardware offload. Tomorrow there will be a talk uh, by a few of my colleagues about the work that was done there in order to enable that. So we came to OVS. OVS is an open, is the most So we came to OVS. OVS is the most popular virtual switch. It's a flow-based one with many capabilities, among which are L2, L3, NAT, VLAN, VXLAN, uh, mirroring, connection tracking, uh, Geneva, and more. And there are multiple control plans built on top of it. There is a user space model. There is, it has a kernel uh, space model. In the traditional way, the packet will, would arrive, the first packet of a flow would arrive to the user space. And then it will insert, the OVS will insert a rule to the kernel and the next packets will just go directly through the kernel. We wanted to add another hardware layer in which the second packet of a flow could go directly through the hardware without the need to go through the kernel. So in this arc, we keep the first packet miss behavior. Each pod should be assigned an SRAOV virtual function. And while OVS set the policies, the hardware executes them. So there are open flow rules, which are the OVS policies that being inserted to the hardware through uh, to the kernel through Linux TC, and the driver is also inserting them to the hardware. As you can see it in here. So um, we can see the TC rules are being um, in, uh, inserted on top of the, configured on top of the relevant NET device. And then the, these rules are also being configured in the hardware. The problem with this design is that it's limited by scale. Uh, since each pod is assigned a virtual function, an SRAO V1, uh, we are limited by the number of virtual functions. Also, it has the, uh, the static nature of PCI uh, device. Therefore, the, the uh, VFs cannot be created or removed on the fly. So for this purpose, uh, scalar bandle functions are now being developed. They are designed to address the scalability constraints of SRIOV 
uh, while keeping the high performance and uh, still uh, provide the full obvious offloads as we uh, described before. They can be uh, dynamic dynamically allocated, um, added and removed on the fly. Each SF has its own NEDEV and they are located on the weird bus where other devices can be located as well. In terms of management, the creation and query of such devices will be done using DevLink. Um, besides being more cloud native and uh, flexible, uh, SAFs are, uh, will scale much higher in numbers than uh, SRO VVF. So uh, this was the work we've done uh, in order to provide better performance in Kubernetes uh, environment uh, using OVN CNI and Nick Haldo offload. Thank you. Thank you, Lyle. Uh, okay, so there's a few questions. Uh, there's one from Jamal, so we'll go with that. Um, what is the latency cost of creating these sub-functions and doing this dynamic device adds and deletes? Uh, actually, we don't have uh, <laughs> we don't have numbers yet, but uh, we do consider that as a as a um, as a control plan. Therefore, it's um, it's more, it's less sensitive. But uh, I don't think we have the numbers yet. <laughs> so yeah. tomorrow, tomorrow we have a, a sub function meeting. Yeah, yes. by Parav, I think yeah. even right Parav. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm here. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think that the latency of the sub function, the major cut down is on the PCI FLR that happens on the each VF. That will be less because now what we have to do is create doubling port, representer, and create the net dev, bring it up. And in some cases, an RDMA device also is there for the sub function. So the essential latency is about creating these four devices and configuring it. And in, 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 in cases where if the user still wants to use it as like a bulk creation and destruction, then it can still do it as like an SRIOV mode where user can create 128 or 256 sub functions up front and then provision one by one to the container at runtime. Yeah, that, that... Go ahead, Jamal. Yeah, I so said that, that may make more sense because uh, <clears throat> if you're bringing this every time your CNI gets invoked and it costs you even milliseconds, it's it's not cheap, right? Because it, it, it limits how many how many how many pods you can bring up per second. That's right. Yeah. Well. I mean, there is big yeah, but numbers. usually, you know, it takes time to bring a, a container. It's not like it's take you you bringing a 10, 10 containers in a second. Uh, you okay. should be able to do faster than that. It defines your scale, no? So I, I believe so that I, there I, are I, other I, things that limit not just the networking creation. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I think there's, so, you know, all this so. crap like ETCD that will slow you down more than this. But, you know, you always try to be faster. Yeah. Guys, if you have a sub sub function doc, let's convert these questions to them because let's talk a little bit about, or if you have questions about this particular topic, uh, which is how this got integrated into the Kubernetes infrastructure, let's limit those questions now since we are way over time. 